Hello and welcome to the T2 Hubcast with me, Benice Cassidy. And me, James Cooper. Hi, James. How are you, Benice? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Very good, very good. I think this is our first podcast together, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah. Um, we've uh, been off all over, haven't we? Just come back from the retreat. Yes. And it's been a really busy couple of months, but um, yes, um, if anyone doesn't know, um, we've just held our very first annual T2 Leadership Retreat, so really exciting event. Um, If you haven't already, check out our socials, you can see lots of videos, a lot of photos um, as well, but um, yeah, really good event, wasn't it? Yeah, very good. Met some heroes of mine, and we're going to talk about one of the other ones today. We are indeed. So James, why are we here today? What's What's the topic? So we are looking at the book... And we, it's one of the cornerstones that we use at T2, um, and it's the chimp paradox. Mm. Uh, and more specifically, we're actually going to look at the part of the book which defines the, the social brain, if you like. Tell and me about I it. I think as well, if we take it a step back as well, really think about um, as well um, why we talk about this. So if anyone doesn't know, if um, T2, we, we are the people performance people, and we like to try and do things a little bit differently. Um, and also as well, a lot of the work that we do really focuses on the psychology, um, human behaviour. But when you explore human behaviour, I don't know about um, about you, James, but you can go on and you can find out and read so much information. This stuff, I've gone down rabbit holes a few times trying to get into the neuroscience and everything that comes with it. So what Steve Peters, I found, Bernice, I don't know if it was the same with you, even even though the book is a a read, I had to get it on Audible, I had to get the the information into my brain. Um, and the best way to do that was to have it in front of me, reading it, listening to it, and then actually talking about it and actually having these conversations. Yes. So let's let's talk about Steve Peters first. Then, so what what what's his full process, Benice? What where did that all come from? So um, his background is, um, I suppose, he's most well known for working in elite sports, yeah. um, working with Olympians as well. So high performing athletes, really exploring actually kind of um, what can we do to ensure that they can maximize that kind of full um, high performance. Um, but this is where a lot of the work that he does, it all focuses around the human brain, because it's really important that you have that understanding of how the brain works um, and the impact that different parts of the brain can have on your actions and what you do. Okay, so let's talk about the actual testing process and what Steve Peters talks about. So, and again, we're going to chip into these different things. And if anybody hasn't read the book, this is going to be a little bit of a whistle-stop tour on how Steve Peters has done his testing, conducted his research, and then the findings that he's got from that as well. So hopefully by the end of this podcast, we'll be giving somebody somewhere a little bit of a toolkit to Hmm. how to maybe deal with their chimp a little bit. And if you haven't read the book, then obviously that sounds quite strange. Yes. Um, But (laughs) we'll, we'll get into the detail of it. So first of all, let's talk about the testing process. So Steve Peters being the one that uh, measured the actual blood flow around the brain when people uh, put into different scenarios and asked different questions. Mm. Um, but what was his findings, Benice? What, what what did he find? So it focused on, I suppose, years of research. Um, and what he was doing, he was, he was um, doing loads and loads of different scans with people and putting them in situations um, which highlighted or which had to stimulate parts of the brain. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it was focused around kind of a like or dislike, but there was loads and loads of different um, things that he um, tested, tested for and um, explored. But what he actually found is that in certain situations or things that stimulate an emotional reaction three parts of the brain kept increasingly increasing with blood flow and that was a case of it was three parts of the brain that were lighting up um and this is where he then kind of um took off and explored this what he calls the social brain okay right then so let's get into the detail of it so we're measuring blood flow around the brain when we're asked questions when we're put in certain situations so the first part that we talk about in leading yourself workshops the frontal lobe Mm -hmm. which how does he describe that Benice? he calls it the human Ooh, nice now if we talk about this it's it's around the logical and rationale so in charge of being logical and rational in the way that you react so when this part of the brain is flooded it is right at the front of your head so it's just behind your forehead and again the key thing to remember about this is that when we are asked questions, it's the amount of time that it takes for the human to be engaged. Mm. And we are going to talk about the timings and, and working towards the actual, how do I manage the chimp? But without understanding the human first, yeah, because 
the chimp is a little bit stronger and it is a little bit faster. So we're going to get into that as well. So first of all, frontal lobe, Steve Peters describes it as the human and it doesn't engage until 1 minute 30 or 90 seconds, whichever yes. one you want to consider, whichever one works for you, that's the key time that we need to be aware of this process. And I think one um, one thing to point out as well is um, when it comes to the frontal lobe, so as Steve Peters calls the human, it's really important to be aware that actually it doesn't take until, up until your, your mid-20s, um, for some people even a little bit longer as well, for that to fully form in a human being. So if you think about that in regards to, let's think about kids, for example, mm. when kids trip up and fall over, you get immediate emotion, immediate tears um, in certain situations where you get frustrated and you think oh why can't you just where's where's the common sense where's the logic it's really interesting to know that that part the part of the brain that's responsible for all of their logic it's not fully formed so if we if we then take that up to teenage age groups and and we're looking at people that are around their teenage years what happens then it's like do this telling people to do things or clean your bedroom whatever it was and I'm a perfect advocate for this <laughs> is that I was being told off quite a lot of the time when I was younger because I just didn't do what I'd been told to do really? um and is that because ooh PlayStation and some of the distractions that you have as a teenager whereas if you was thinking about getting things done and having the best way of working and having yes. to adapt in that way then yeah you you're still not even fully formed so that's why you start to lose your I like doing this I don't like doing this I don't like well, all right dad calm down <laughs> but the reactions could be more emotions and feelings so what we're describing there then is um the second part of the brain that steve peters talks about which is the chimp the chimp so we're actually looking at the limbic system here um now if everybody that's listening to the podcast just scrumple your your fist together and make a fist and make sure your thumb just goes underneath your fingers now if you open up your hand you've got you've got the frontal lobe which is obviously at the front of your knuckle you've got the um parietal lobe which is towards the back or center of the brain but actually if you open up your fingers that small amount of space in that you've just left with your thumb that's the easiest way to describe the chimp and where it sits within your brain yes Okay. Perfect. Just a little reference for everybody there. I like it. I, I was doing my little fist there following along with you, James, as well. So the limbic system, so um, very kind of small, sits in the, the centre of the brain. So what is it responsible for? Ooh, we're going to get emotional. Oh. And we're going to start talking about our feelings <laughs> because that is what it's in charge of. It's in charge of your emotions and your feelings. Yes. Um, and remember, this is in the first 0. 0.5 to 10 seconds. If your chimp is or that area of the brain that limbic system is being triggered and being having that reaction being flooded with blood that's when you start to see people get very emotional mm -hmm. and maybe start to lose control of the feelings a little bit um but what does that look like um and we always ask the question of what really triggers that limbic system mm. um and i'd like everybody that's listening to maybe start thinking about those mm -hmm. so Steve Peters, he mentions in the book about not letting your chimp out in a supermarket. And why shouldn't we do that? Well, if you think about this in a professional context, if you get that email, and we and I know that I've I've suffered this in the past, is that when that email comes in at five to five and you're leaving at five o'clock and you're going to have to reply to it and it's somebody attacking your process <laughs> or attacking something that you've done or maybe even some potential negative feedback, mm -hmm. what are the reactions from people? Yeah. Now, if your boss that's just sent that email is sat in the next room and all they hear, all they hear is maybe oh, voice increase, mm -hmm. turn, maybe some colourful language, yeah. which we're not using anymore on the podcast for me and Bernice anyway. So if it is that you start to look at those things and you start to hear that, that could cause... Maybe a relationship yeah. to maybe fall by the wayside or think of someone even that respect. To, yeah, I can think mm. of someone that I used to work with. Whenever he was frustrated, whenever something happened, it was like an immediate kind of the, the chimp's been tri yeah. triggered, emotions and feelings, um, and it would just come out as well. And it would always be a loud fist bump on yeah. the table. And you just knew another thing that he used to do was that he would grab his mouse and slam it on the table. Ooh. And it was like, oh, something's oh. happened. Is he all right? And everyone would probably... Um, try and ignore him but when it comes to the chimp so the chimp is responsible for it's that emotions and feelings um is it in your conscious control so we can talk about the 
the first point five and that timing mm. is that what will happen is, and we're going to come to the parietal lobe in a second, but the chimp is it's that initial knee jerk reaction. And the reason yes. for that is because there's three things that will basically make your chimp react. Mm. Um, and the purpose is really for, well, we won't be here if it wasn't for these things. Yes. So the first one is survival. It's in charge of survival, looking after you, keeping the species going. Mm. Um, the second one is your basic reproduction and having people that are going are gonna to have those relationships and be able to keep the species projecting forward. Because uh, obviously if we don't have those relationships, mm-hmm. we don't necessarily carry Circle on. Circle of there. life. Yeah, that's that. it. And we'll, and we'll leave it there. Thank you very <laughs> yeah, much, that's, Denise. It's not that type of podcast. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then the, then the final part is, and we talk about this within the Leading Yourself workshop as well, is your sense of purpose. Mm. Now, what gets you out of bed? Why do you do things the way that you do them? Well, normally we can find a thread from your sense of purpose, which is where everything comes from. Mm. Um, and it's to do with your experiences. It's what you've experienced. And we'll talk about um, the process of that as well. But when we start to look at those things, it is around, if those three things are compromised, what do we see? Yes. So the chimp will react in a number of different ways and it'll be it'll show up in a different way context yes or each person's totally different Mm -hmm. but really what are the three things or i think it's starting to relate to more two now that the chimp would actually do yeah so if you think of um the chimp then so um so why is it called the chimp why does steve peters call it the chimp so that chimp is as the same as a chimpanzee in the wild and it was great to listen to any of the podcasts that that steve peters does um but the chimp or chimpanzees, five times faster and five times stronger in real life than a human. Yes. And that's where the analogy comes from. Yes. Um, And so this is why, um, so James has just been exploring kind of the three reasons why it's five times faster, five times stronger than than the human. So if we explore that then, so um, the first reason it's five times faster, five times stronger is for survival. So I suppose if you think about kind of um, in today's world, we probably um, don't really have kind of in our day-to-day lives, life or death situations. But I suppose if you think right back, Back to I don't know. Let's say that we're we're in caveman days. Yeah. So what might that look like? Ooh, it's a big scary saber tooth tiger, Benice. Oh my goodness! It is, and it's 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 kicking out, kicking into our cave. Yeah. And it's maybe putting us in very much three states, if you like. So it's fight. Yes. That's quite small saber tooth tiger. I can fight that one, <laughs> and he looks He's quite strong. yummy. And I've also <laughs> got the the flight function, which would then be run fast, get away, hide. Yeah. Or the freeze function. Mm. Now, freeze is, is between the fight and flight, if you like. Yes. Um, but Steve Peter does recognise it as a, as, a, as a reaction for the chimp. Yeah. So let's leave it with him and his research to, to, to go into the detail. The freeze about. sometimes gets debated, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so I suppose thinking about that then. So if you really think about it. So we, we had to wake up once upon a time in, in fear every single day mm. because we weren't the top of the food chain. So um, as you just said there, James, it was a case of we had to wake up. We had to look out. Oh, my God, there's a saber tooth tiger. Right, what are we going to do? Kind of, we're going to fight it? Yeah. No, it's absolutely massive. If I even try and fight that, then I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be here. Yeah. Um, the um, tomorrow but in probably I would imagine a lot of situations we it would be a flight situation so mm. the chimp is responsible for exactly that fight or flight um, freeze of course gets involved yeah. there um, like it's responsible for your likes and dislikes as well um, but survival um Root, that's probably the, the top reason. It's probably the reason why we're still here today. The fact yeah. that the chimp that is responsible um, is five times faster, five times stronger. Can you imagine if we um, woke up in, in our caves, looked out, we were faced with a saber-toothed tiger and we paused for a moment to apply logic and rationale to that situation? What would the result of that be? Well, I don't think we'd be here for much longer. That put no. It that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but let's, let's take that then. So the reactions in that 90 seconds... And the, or one minute 30, whichever way you want to think about it. If you are taking that time and then engaging your logic and rationale, there might be a, a slightly different reaction and or behavior yes. that you would then see. But there is that other part of the social brain that we haven't spoken about yet. Mm. So 
What is the parietal lobe in Steve Peters' well, Denise? So the parietal lobe is referred to as the computer. So that's, um, I suppose, the, it's the memory, it's the database of you. So all of the experiences that you go through in life all get stored in the parietal lobe. So in certain situations, it helps you out. So in certain situations, um, it will be a case of our brain will automatically go there to get information of have we been in this situation before? What do we do? How do we react in, in, in this? Um, and in which case the parietal lobe kicks in. So that one is actually is an instant automatic um, response in regards to the others. So those are those automatic response. It's like I, I imagine I always use the the learning to drive analogy. Oh, yes, uh, good one. You know what? When I first got in that car and I was sat with my driving instructor and I'm shaking because I'm yep. that nervous and that's, oh, I'm <laughs> feeling scared. That's your emotions and your feelings. Yes. That's all your chimp, right? Yeah. But... I'm quite glad to say now, Bernice, I don't sit in my car and start shaking. Your legs are <laughs> I'm going, oh, I'm so <laughs> nervous. So what that describes is, is, is building those those memories, if you like, mm. and how they come forward. Now, if we talk about from a computer and a prior to love point of view, is they're now what Steve Peters describes as autopilots. Yes. And they're the things that just happen. Yeah. Because you've done them over and over again and, yeah. and it happens and you can, you know how this is going to run out. I know how to drive to where. Yeah. I can, I know the exact route I'm going to go every single day. I can probably guarantee that at least one of our listeners right now is listening to this podcast whilst driving along in yeah. their car and we've probably just made them think, oh, actually, hang on. Um, yeah. How did I get here? And just driving along, you're in autopilot. Yeah. yeah. It's a, and it's a it's an interesting concept for people to understand is that but when was the first time that you you have experienced something and it just happens it just yes. happens and you go oh well how has that happened and what happens at work is it that you fill out a spreadsheet and it's just you've say, you've filled out this same spreadsheet yeah. again and again and again and again and the only things that change are the very small minor details but you know it's coming you and it's just the repetitions that you've had yes so okay. But does everybody have a chimp? We all have one. Right. So everybody's got a chimp, but there is a point of, well, what do we do with this then? Because we can't just go around crying and having our emotions and feelings in check all the time or getting frustrated and fighting all the time. Mm. So what what what's the process? How does it happen? How can we... We know about these three parts of the social brain now, but how do they interlink and how do they work? So I think it's important to it's thinking about the um, what you might see from people. So again, as we as we said earlier, so a lot of the work that we do at T2, working with all sorts of different businesses and organisations, really focuses in, on understanding how humans behave. So looking at all of this um, and the chimp paradox, it's really important to be aware of what are the things, what are the situations that can actually kind of um, that engage the limbic system for you. Because let's say we're working together, James, and and uh, I don't know, something happens. And you my... annoy the hell out of me. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> I do something and your chimp ki um, kicks into gear. The likelihood is I'm going to see certain behaviours from you. Yeah. Um, that perhaps you may they then later down the line you then kick into the um to the frontal lobe the human and you might think oh I maybe didn't behave or react in in the best way there yeah. um so that's where it comes really important because if you're working in a business in an organisation where everyone is almost continuously almost feeling as though they're they're at risk and the the survival's been triggered the chimps in flight then it's going to be a really dysfunctional place to work because you're going to be seeing all of this these people just running off off their chimps. People are going to be clashing. It's really important that we have awareness of actually not only understanding how all of this works, but then also as well being aware of what are the situations that do trigger our chimp and actually how do we manage it. So, what's the first bit of advice we're going to people are listening to this now and saying right. I'm very chimpy. I'm, I'm, I'm always emotions and feelings. There's always that person that in the office that cries more than everybody else. But there's also people that will quite quietly, yes, internalize some of these energies. Yeah, and they're they're some of the some of the times it is when we talk about chimp management. What advice can we give to people? Yeah, and I think you make a really good point there as well. Just to expand on that, is um, when. 
when something when you're in a situation and the limbic system kicks in so for some people they will externalize it so that might mm. be that you you see that frustration that might be that person slamming their fist on the table but for some people as well it's a case that they internalize it because that's just how they're wired yeah. but it's still you might see what um tracy she likes to call it facial fireworks you might see that that frustration or that stress or that fear what, yeah. or anxiety whatever however it shows up you might see it on their face or for some people it's it's the internal narrative that's going on inside their brain and that still has a significant impact on what shows up and how that person then behaves or what they do next sometimes that plans someone's demise oh yeah oh the- yeah it's a little bit, little bit dangerous for me that yeah. when I don't like talking about it too much. Yeah. And I've ups- I'm, I'm trying not to upset many people, but if I have upset someone, do I? Do they have the open and honest conversations mm. after one minute thirty? Once they've engaged that logic and rationale, yes. Or do they keep it inside? And basically, what Steve Peters says is boxing the chimp. Yeah. Now, so- for some people, that, and I don't know about you, Benice, but I find this so hard. Do you? So hard because yeah. I am that I am the facial firework. Facial fireworks, externalise it. Upset me. Yeah, you're gonna see you it. You can see it clear as day. Yeah. What about you? Um, I think it depends on the situation. Um I think my face often gives it away if I am frustrated. <laughs> um, I've been told that in the past, but that's something that I try and be quite conscious of. Yep. My face in such certain situations when I am um a little bit frustrated or or annoyed. Um but I like to think that I have a very good ability to try and box it, as right. Steve Peter says. Don't don't exercise it in yeah. the, in a supermarket. Um, but I think as well, it depends on who you're around and what the situation is. Okay. So then the next one, then. So you're better at boxing it than I am. The next part, and we've just touched on it there, is not exercising your chimp or exercising your chimp. Now, yes. what what type of environments am I going to pick to do this? Because we've said that loads of people are real chimpy, mm. but when's the best time to exercise your chimp? So again, it's probably going to be different for different people, but um, it's really important that you do exercise the chimp and let off that steam or frustration or just externalize it and talk it through with people. Yeah. Um, for a lot of people, that is um, with the people that are closest to them. So for you, You've got James... you to trust them, right? Exactly. So it's yeah. that trusted person. So for you, it might be you get home um, and you speak to your partner. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where you can you can talk about it. Yeah. For some people in the workplace, it might be that they've they've there's a peer or a colleague that they work with where they've got that real strong bond and that that level of trust that they can talk openly and honestly about certain situations and just understanding that they're not going to get thrown under the bus yeah there's say. there's no judgment or also as well for sometimes it might be that i i'm exercising my chimp i'm talking about that level of frustration or whatever it is that i'm feeling um and sometimes it's a case of i need you to just listen because yeah. i just need to talk about it sometimes it's a case of i need you to listen to me james but i really value and want some advice on how to do deal with this situation because yeah. I'm really up here right now and there's quite a bit of balance to that as well and when when we start to look at who do you go to so for the everybody that's listening now who can you vent to who yeah. can you who acts as a bit of a soundboard for yeah. you and that's totally totally up to the relationships that you have with the people that are around you yeah that and it's not a forced thing there'll be people that you will go to mm. to have that conversation yeah and whether it's a family member, I know that if I've had a, a tough a tough week, I'll always just try and sound off away from home, mm. so I can I go to my parents and just have that have that conversation yeah. first, and then I've provided clarity, and then I can go back home to my house and go. This is this is where I'm at. Yeah, and it's important to think as well that for other people. So if you kind of um, if you flip it. Some people see you as that person. Yeah, so be aware of actually for some people it is a case of when they feel as though um, that's been triggered, emotions and feelings, they need to exercise it. That they come if they're coming to you to to be able to do that, ask them the question, do you want me to listen or, or what do you want from me? How how can yeah, I support you with this? Um, because that's really gonna help make a difference. Cause sometimes people do just need to exercise it and let it all off. Cause something that we do talk about with a lot of um, the people that we work with is the danger is yes know when and where to exercise it but 
it's important that you do that because otherwise you might just end up boxing it and boxing it and then what happens? The kettle breaks and you yeah. lose your mind. Yes. <laughs> it just kind of, it, then one small thing happens and yeah. then boom, you let it all out and the likelihood is that um, the person seeing all of that is the person who probably least... Ne- not needs it. I can't think of the right word, but they're the person who's probably done one tiny, small, little thing, and then yeah. bam, it all comes out because it's been building and building. So, so there we go. Then, so the the final bit of advice we can offer, and what Steve Peters offers as well, is that when you are in these environments and you are, you know that the that meetings come in with a certain individual, or mm. from you know that you've been under quite a bit of pressure, stress. Yeah fear, anxiety, all those things that we sort of talk about when we talk about cortisol. And if you haven't had a little look at that, then have a look at our um, our Chemical Soup mm. podcast, which is coming soon as well. Um, and that, that point being, what can I do in the moment when I can't exercise it and I'm finding it really hard to box it? Yeah. What might be the other, the one other thing that Steve Peters offers? So the third method is to distract it. So it's to do something where you can completely kind of um, distract from it. And there's loads of different um, ways that people do this. For some people, it might be doing something physical. Yep. Um, so for some people, it might just be if you're in a situation, being able to just stand up and, and remove yourself from the situation. But of course, that's not always yeah, an that's option. that's not going to work in a meeting, right, Bernice? Definitely. It isn't going to be a case of we're in a big project meeting and you're criticizing my team and my chimps activated I can't just walk out I mean I could but it's not going to be productive in that moment okay so what's your advice so my advice is for me I think what works really well is having that good level of um I suppose self-talk being very aware of when that happens what's actually running through your mind so what are the what are the statements what's Mm -hmm. it telling you is it is it a case of um oh James is telling me that my team are rubbish he thinks that we're really bad and um how dare he come come and talk about um my team he needs to think about his own own team and all of those things whatever it is that's going on in your head you need to almost pause take a moment abc it so acknowledge it accept it breathe because it's really important that we breathe because scientifically it's proven that breathing lowers the levels of cortisol increases the oxygen c is control so really important to breathe calm down because then what you can do is you're giving yourself time to engage the human which is the the part of the brain that's responsible for yeah. all of your logic and rationale and also as well just challenge those thoughts that you're having so um i don't know if someone pitches an idea and it's a completely different idea to what you've pitched um you might be um sat there thinking that's a rubbish idea um i can't believe they've said that i can't yeah. believe they don't agree with me well is that true like is it a rubbish idea or am I just, has my survival been triggered um, and my chimps kicked into yeah. flight and I've become really defensive and people can see that frustration for me? Is that true? But also as well, how do I feel when I have that thought? I feel really frustrated and I feel really annoyed and people probably aren't seeing the best from me at the moment, but I'm really, I'm really frustrated here. Um, and also as well, one thing that um, I just mentioned that question, is that true? That statement that's going on in my mind, is it true? The likelihood is your chimp's still engaged and it's going to reply with, yes, of course it's true. Yeah. So your second question sometimes is, well, is it absolutely true? And then you can kind of challenge it in in a little way. But um, yeah, you have to ask those questions to almost challenge it because the chimp isn't you. The chimp is the... I suppose it's it's the other side of you. And again, so think of the the logical part of the brain. That is you Mm. because that's why it's called the human. You have to sometimes challenge it in order to distract it and and get it away and um, from those thoughts because sometimes those thoughts that are happening are really negative and they're not productive and sometimes they're completely crazy and not even true. So one of the questions I've, and this might be for for everybody to maybe just apply and it might not work for you, it might not, it might, be a little bit of a game changer so when you're in those environments and you're having those meetings and i'm attacking your team beneath what 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 if i tried to give you a little bit of a tool so if i said you know what take notes and take notes to the point where it is the detail you don't want to miss don't miss any detail yeah don't miss a thing 
because that's going to impact it. If you're going to try and attack my process, yeah. I'm going to listen to every single word that you're saying. Yeah. I'm going to make a note on it. I'm going to make key points. And then I'm going to take that one minute 30 or 90 seconds to go, this is now how I'm going to react. Yes. Giving yourself the chance with that ABC technique, which we use at T2, mm. linking it to the chimp paradox is that, okay, how long should that process take? Well, it needs to, to have a chance. It might be that you just give yourself that one minute 30. Yeah. When possible, by the way. Yes. And it's not going to happen every time. You're no. not saying that. But having that question, making sure you're distracting your chimp by taking notes yeah. or having that process in place that you know you're coming into this situation. Mm. You know you're going to go into that meeting. You know that there's been, there's, there might have been mistakes made. Yeah. So how does that make you feel? And what is your reaction going to be about maybe rehearsing, having that conversation, yeah. like you said, with the chimp? Yeah. To go, okay, we feel like this. I accept that situation. I'm going to breathe for about one minute 30. Yes. And then I'm going to control what I can control, yep. which the first thing is yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a little bit of a link of a thread between the two. So what I just think now, Bernice, is that if we can start to just wrap this up. So three things that you need to remember about the social brain in the in a, in a quite a Quick fire round and a bit of a summary of what we've talked about. So the social brain, first one, frontal lobe, the human. Yeah. Okay. What's it in charge of? Responsible for all of your logic and rationale. Okay. Limbic system, which is the chimp. Responsible for emotions and feelings. Okay. And the parietal lobe, the computer. Yep. That's the database. That's the memory where all of that is stored. Okay. Now we're going to talk about managing the chimp. What are the three things that's, that it's important for the chimp to protect? So it's the survival, reproduction, and sense of purpose. Yeah. If any of those three things are compromised, what are the reactions? Yeah, so then the, the chimp's going to kick in. but um, And as well, five times faster, five times stronger because of those three reasons. Yeah, okay, yep, yeah. yeah, covering that. And then those reactions, so it's fight, flight, or sometimes freeze. Yeah, and it's responsible for like and dislike, friend or foe. So yeah. think about those situations where you meet someone and your brain will be scanning. Do we like this person? Do we not? Okay. Yeah. Benice? I think we've covered that in just as much detail. There might be a second podcast on this. Yeah, because I think as well, it's just um, it's having that conscious awareness of it because the chimp isn't always in our con conscious control. So mm. I think if we were to give anyone just a piece of advice, it would be really think about this. Think about the yeah. times when your chimp is activated and really think about what can I do to better manage that? You can't get rid of it, but how do I better manage that? And how do I stop myself from just immediately running around and just reacting to things? Okay. And really think is that productive because I like to think um, the chimp is your reactions if you give yourself the opportunity to engage the human have your logic and rationale you can then think about the outcome that you want from that situation yes. how do I respond accordingly to get that because if you just run around just with your, your chimp exercising it off in the supermarket yep. you're just reacting to stuff and the likelihood is it's not going to be productive Bernice I'd like to say thank you. It's been a pleasure. First podcast together. I know I've enjoyed um, it, and uh, I think I think if we can go forward, brilliant. Let's have it. Let's let's not wait too long before we get behind the microphones. No, we'll be back soon for another T Two Hubcast. Goodbye. Thanks, James. We are going to explore print. What are you talking about? What's print? Print is this fantastic model that we use with a lot of our clients. It's all about unconscious motivators. So it's a model based on motivations that are responsible for our thoughts, for our feelings, for our actions, because they operate at that deeper level. If you really want to take it to the next level in regards to your self-development, whether it be for you as an individual, or for yep. your team, for your organisation, then get in touch because we'd love to help support. When I say it's changed my life, it really has. You guys need to get in touch with the T2 Towers. Yeah. Um, send an email, just follow us on social media. Thank you very much. I'm James Cooper. And I'm Denise Cassidy. Are you a fan of our podcast? If so, make sure you're following us on all of our social media channels. You can find us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter by searching Trans2 Performance. By following us, you'll have access to exclusive content, special announcements, and more. Join the T2 community today.